Hi everybody, I'm Kelly. Hi everyone, I'm Amber, and we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about where we studied abroad, which is the University of Roehampton in London, England. So a little bit more about me, I am a senior majoring in MIS, Marketing and International Business, and my reason for studying abroad is that I've always had um, somewhat of a fascination with British culture, but my primary reason was really to broaden my global knowledge. So prior to studying abroad at Roehampton, I actually did a study abroad in South Korea, and this was kind of an opportunity for me to come outside of my comfort zone and go to a country that was very different from the cultures that I'm usually acquainted with. So I'm also a senior, um, I'm majoring in MIS, HR, and IB. Um, and the reason why I wanted to study abroad in London was because I lived in Hawaii my entire life. So I kind of wanted to um, experience something outside of Hawaii and I've always wanted to travel Europe. So I'm really grateful for the opportunity to have been able to live and study abroad at another country and experience so many different cultures. So moving into school life, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual university. So the University of Roehampton was established in 1975 through a joining of four constituent colleges. And as a result, Roehampton follows its traditional roots by using a housing system to sort students into the different colleges. So in essence, you can almost think of Roehampton as kind of like a modern day Hogwarts. Um, Roehampton itself is very diverse, enrolling students from over 140 countries. It also has a really good reputation for quality of teaching and a research opportunities. Um, the campus is located um, right next to Richmond Park on a 15 minute walk and is surrounded by beautiful vegetation. So moving on to classes. Um, this was our class schedule. So we only had classes on Monday and Monday, Tuesday and Thursday, um, once a week. So we were taking global and international business, business ethics, and responsible management and entrepreneurial development, as well as um, British literature. So classes in the UK are very different from the US. Um, every class had a one hour lecture and two hour seminar. So essentially what a seminar is, is it breaks up the lecture into smaller groups of classes and it's more discussion and application based. So um, within these classes, there are two major assignments a formative, which is basically an outline of your final paper, and then the summative, which is your graded final paper. So um, for our final papers, they're usually about 3,000 words long. Um, and for example, in our global and international business class, um, it was basically a report on a case study. So definitely these classes are more self-directed, um, so it allows students to go at their own pace. There are no homework assignments, but we are expected to um, complete our readings and supplemental materials. So essentially, your grade is based on how well you do on your final paper. Okay, and then moving more into accommodations. So the good thing about Roehampton is that on-campus housing is guaranteed for all study abroad students, so you don't have to worry about trying to find a place to stay. Um, as mentioned before, the Roehampton is split into four colleges, Digby, Stewart, Southlands, Robol, and Whitelands, and whichever college you're placed in also determines whichever housing facilities you're also gonna be placed in. So for both me and Kelly, we were placed in Robol College and we were in the Willow House. So talking a little bit more about the dorms. Um, so the dorms specifically in Willow were single rooms with N-suite bathrooms. And an N-suite bathroom is essentially just a private bathroom. Um, it is very spacious and included a desk, chair, and a twin size bed. You can actually request for a private bathroom through the study abroad center, as well as ask to live in a quieter block once you get it, once you get the email from the University of Roehampton asking if you have any um, special requests that you wanna to give to the school. In terms of the common area or the kitchen, each flat has a common area and kitchen that is equipped with all your basic necessities. So an oven, microwave, toaster, water heater, as well as refrigerators. Um, the university gives each of the students a kitchen set as well as um, bedding sheets on the first day that you arrive. So you don't have to worry about purchasing those things um, when you first get there, you'll have everything ready for you, um, for you to start cooking or for you to sleep on your first day. So one thing that was really great about the study abroad program is that they include a social program, um, which is a lot of activities that they include into your study abroad um, program. So it really allowed us to discover more about the history, art, and culture of England. And these are just some that we wanted to highlight. So we took a 
boat cruise to Greenwich. Um, so it's basically the site overlooking the Greenwich Meridian Line, uh, which has a longitude of zero degrees. And the Greenwich Meridian also serves as the basis for the World Standard Time Zone System. So it was really cool learning about that. And we also got to see the musical Wicked, and we visited Stonehenge and Bath, where we learned that construction for these stones that are still standing today started in 3000 BC and are currently 5,000 years old. And we also got to visit Wales, which is home of the Abbey of Pinchern. And we got to go on the Jack the Ripper tour and visit Cambridge University, which was a very, very nice university. So moving more into the actual cultural experiences you can partake while you're in London. Um, so first, transportation. Um, it does take around an hour to one and a half hours to get to central London from the University of Roehampton through um, things, a combination of trains and buses. So the way that you can actually go onto the transportation is that you have to purchase what is called an Oyster card. And it's um, usually you can purchase it either at the train stations or in convenience stores. And you can use it essentially on any type of public transportation, including trains, buses, and trams. Um, it's helpful to download the Oyster card app in order to check your balance or if you want to top up. Um, you can also use the City Mapper app if you want to access um, any directions or the best way to get to like a certain destination. It'll tell you the different routes that you can take, um, including like the trains or buses. In terms of discounts, you can download the Student Beans and Unities app to look for discounts on various stores. Um, in addition, it's always helpful to ask a student representative at physical locations if there are any student discount opportunities, because um, more likely than not, they'll have some type of student discount available for you. In terms of cuisine, um, the Infatuation is a really useful app to use to search up restaurants or any recommendations in your specific area. And Time Out has really good articles on places to eat or tips on must try or restaurants to try while you're in London. So speaking of cuisine, um, I think the, one of the best parts about living in a different country is trying the food. And as I said before, London is a cultural melting pot. So they have a lot of different cuisines and these are just some that we recommend. Um, the Joom is a really popular restaurant known for Indian food and um, London also has really great Chinese food so if you are a noodle lover I would definitely recommend going to Master's John Wei. And then the Delaney is a good place to go to for afternoon tea and Darjeeling Express is also another Indian restaurant um, but this one was actually featured on Netflix, Netflix's series Chef's Table. And um, these are also some of the desserts we ate. So as you can see, we ate a lot, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, there was a lot of good food to find in London. Okay, so moving on to some of our recommendations on activity to, activities to do while you're in London. Um, so the first is escape rooms, and I'm sure all of you know what an escape room is if you've ever been to Breakout Waikiki. So just like here, um, London has multiple escape room companies across the city, and we specifically chose break-in escape rooms because they had really unique theme rooms, such as like Sherlock's Despair and a Harry Potter themed room, and they also do student discount on weekends, um, on weekdays. So you get kind of like the best experience for a really cheap price. Um, second is West End Musicals. So similar to its Broadway counterpart in New York, the West End is known to have some of the best commercial theater in the world. So some of our favorites to watch were Hamilton and Waitress. Um, free museums are also really another great um, thing about the UK. It has free admissions to all of their national museums. And really the objective of this was to broaden the range of visitors by providing universal free entrance. So as a result, a lot of well-renowned um, museums such as the V&A, British Museum, um, Tate Britain, and Natural History Museum are all completely free to enter. So these are just some of the recommendations for markets to go to. Um, the first one is Camden Market. So um, this is where you can find a lot of vintage items. It's good for thrifting. And there's a huge food market that overlooks the canal. Um, we also visited Chinatown pretty often and you can find a lot of Asian restaurants and um, go grocery shopping. So we went here a lot to buy ingredients and food um, to cook. 
and there's also Notting Hill. So this is kind of similar to Camden Market, except it's a street market. So it has a lot of handcrafted items, and it's a really aesthetic neighborhood um, because of the colorful houses. So you'll find like a lot of people taking pictures here. Next, we have some um, tips for traveling. So some of the useful apps that we used was Skyscanner and Hopper to compare seat flight tickets across various airlines. So um, we, after researching which airlines are the cheapest, we booked through the company directly. Um, and then the most common airlines that we did use was EasyJet and Ryanair, and these are budget airlines, so they were very affordable and you can find flights as cheap as $100. And, and most importantly, definitely do your research before traveling. <laughs> so look into the culture and lifestyle of what country you're traveling to before you get there, um, figure out how they do transportation um, and some of the tips that they have. So some of the blogs that we looked at for these was um, Nomadic Mat, Flying the Nest, and Blonde Abroad. So moving into the various countries that we visited, so just like Kelly said, being in London also means that you're in a great location um, and access to major transportation hubs such as the train and um, airplanes. So uh, it's extremely affordable to travel to other countries, so we highly recommend that you take advantage of that. Um, I think in total, me and Kelly traveled to around 13 countries in the four to five month time span that we were in Europe. So again, um, just a really great way to kind of experience a different country's culture and um, lifestyle. So some of the places we went to include Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Um, so they have a lot of different canals. Um, they're known to have a lot of bicycles, so something to watch out for if you do go. Another place we went to is Dublin and Galway in Ireland. This is a really nice getaway. Um, it was kind of a more refreshing scene it had a lot of really cool monuments and um, historical buildings to visit and another place we went to is Athens in Greece and they're known for um, kind of their ancient ruins and Greek mythology. We also visited Lisbon in Portugal and we visited the famous Pina Palace. Um, we also went to Barcelona in Spain. Um, this is one of my favorite cities because it's a very walkable beautiful city. Um, the food is great and the people are nice. And then we also went to Copenhagen and Denmark during um, Christmas time. So there are a lot of um, Christmas markets open as well. So we wanted to end off this presentation with some of our takeaways and highlights. Um, so first off, studying abroad definitely gives you um, a lot of perspective. So especially for me, um, having lived here my entire life, it kind of made me realize how big the world really was. And since London is a cultural melting pot, um, we're, we're really able to experience a diversity of cultures, architecture, art, people, and food. And it made me realize the unique differences between um, this country and other countries and taught me how to be more open-minded and adapt. So one, um, our second key takeaway is that it's really important to participate and get involved with the university events. So Warhampton itself has a ton of um, clubs, events, and social gatherings for students to take advantage of and attend. So um, one of the clubs that I joined this semester was Society, which is um, a social tea drinking club. So really getting that um, British culture immersion. Um, so I think the really good thing about Roehampton is that their club fees are extremely cheap. So for me to um, sign up for Society, it only costs two pounds for the entire semester, which is around two dollars. And um, the things that you can gain from attending these club events um, and the friends that you can make are definitely worth the um, fee and the experience. So it's just a really good way to meet people of different countries, different backgrounds, and make the most of your university experience as a whole. So another tip is to definitely put yourself out there and make new friends. And um, as Amber said, a really good way to do this is to participate and get involved in clubs. Um, and it's a good way to combat homesickness um, and we even keep in touch with our friends today. To end off the presentation, we just wanted to say thank you for listening. And of course, if you want um, any extra details on our travel itineraries or tips to surviving London, we recommend that you visit our blogs because um, we did post quite frequently about the different things that we we're doing throughout our time um, in London. And of course, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to either Kelly or me. Um, 
if you want to get more information about studying abroad or what the process is like.